what I would tell myself if I had a crystal ball before um, COVID is get ready. We deal with death and dying. I don't even dare to imagine what I'm going to encounter on any given day. The current day during the pandemic was unlike anything we've ever seen. Yeah, not just in the documentary, but any healthcare professional. We never had a day like we had during the pandemic. All of our resources were pushed all the way up to what we call the healthcare capacity line. And that meant every worker in the hospital, whether it was nurse, doctor, physician's assistant, respiratory therapist, environmental uh, specialist, administrator, we were all worked 24 seven to make sure that we held the line. We did not uh, let the front fall here in New York. And I'm quite proud of uh, how well everybody did. So I don't have cancer. Well, that's what I want to talk to you a little bit about. You know, before the coronavirus, um, life was different. I mean, we have changed as a healthcare uh, industry, as physicians, as nurses, as respiratory therapists, we're all different. We've seen things we never anticipated seeing during the coronavirus uh, first wave. Um, however, it's not been all bad. We've improved in a lot of ways what we are, know are, were inefficiencies in the healthcare system prior to the coronavirus. So frankly, we're more efficient now than we were uh, before COVID. We have uh, safety uh, measures in place that we didn't have before COVID. I think the, the hospitals will actually get back to a superior sense of normalcy, meaning that we were, no we were normal before COVID, we had COVID, and now we're actually gonna be even better than we were for having gone through COVID. The field of neurosurgery was really uh, affected by a number of ways from this pandemic. One is we know the virus gets into the brain and actually uh, wreaks havoc directly in the brain. In particular, um, it causes bleeding in the brain and something called necrotizing encephalitis. And so we saw many, many patients have significant neurological issues from infection with uh, COVID-19. In addition, a lot of us we're told not to do elective surgery. So if there was an elective brain tumor or an elective spinal case, we weren't allowed to do those. So instead, either we volunteered um, or some uh, doctors were redeployed in areas that they're not usually accustomed to. My staff and myself volunteered to run the clinical trial program here at Lenox Hill for COVID-19 because that's my expertise. So I would wake up every day, come in here, uh, put on PPE and start consenting patients and their families to allow us to give them novel drugs and therapeutics. And that was extremely um, uh, interesting and fruitful. And um, it, it taught me a tremendous amount about not only the disease, but indirectly about other diseases that affect the nervous system. We filmed uh, the docuseries Lennox Hill for approximately 18 months. and. It's work, um, and even though there's no acting or anything like that, um, it takes effort to, one, you have to develop relationships with your patients to make sure that they trust that in working together to tell their stories on a documentary that it's uh, protective and uh, private uh, in some ways. And, and so that relationship building is uh, an important part of how you make a good docuseries. We didn't fake it. We didn't try um, to hide things. We are completely transparent. This is a documentary that it, its intent was to tell the truth and to show and expose the beauty of what goes on inside these great walls of hospitals across the nation and really to tell the stories of the patients and their suffering and their success and their the crying and the laughing and the joys and the tears that go with it. You're about to see what greatness is all about. The humanity behind the work is the reason for doing uh, the show and really to highlight the humanism or the importance of why we why we get emotional, why we get so tied to our patients and their loved ones, and why they get tied to us and, and rely on us for their health and wellness. And it's almost impossible to show in a fictional series like, for example, Grey's Anatomy. We're real human beings with real emotions. We have emotions when we come up out of our homes in the morning, whether it's a sick child or an angry wife, uh, we come to work with our own baggage, as do our patients and families. And so the beauty of this docuseries is it's a mosaic of real emotions. And it really shows the 
the humanism behind all of us. Get angry. <laughs> yes, you can. Listen to me. You can. Having done this type of series, it makes you a little bit more introspective. It makes you analyze how you got here. Who are your mentors? Who are your pillars? Who are your role models? And what makes you tick? And I think more than anything, that's what I've learned from this experience.